John McDonald. Uh, I'm here to interview you on behalf of Cask 88. So it's wonderful to now be here in the boardroom at Bulblair Distillery uh, talking to John McDonald, the master distiller, uh, for 15 years now and some years before that. But tell me, John, did you always want to be a distiller? Uh, no. Um, I went to college in Edinburgh. Uh, for one reason or another, I hated it mm. and wanted to come back up here. You know, it sounds very cliched and romantic, mm. um, but I really miss you know, outdoors, mm -hmm. you know, see, I want to see a loch, I want to see a mountain. What was it particularly about um, Balblair that, that lured you in? Well I, th well, I think it's evident, you know, when you visit the distilleries, the location's fabulous. I think Ken Loach said it when he came here, this is what I imagined a distillery to look like. And I, I still believe that uh, today. When you drive down that road mm. and you see it, you know, that's a distillery. The village that Balblair is in, Edgerton, I think it's rated as having the cleanest air in Scotland. It was, it was, was that St Andrews or Aberdeen University, I can never remember which, mm. uh, but they established that, you know, the air quality in this area uh, was the highest in Scotland. And would that have an impact on the whisky, do you reckon? It's certainly an advantage, and I'm not complaining about it, but we don't have any smog or anything like that. And the water source for the distillery is also a very clean, very pure, and only used by Balblair. That's right. Um, we've got sole use uh, to the water, which comes from the Struy Hills. Our source is about six miles uh, into the hill, and it runs almost entirely open ditch until the distillery. And it's typical Scottish water. You know, it's very, very soft, very pure. Mm. It's not chemically treated, it's not UV treated comes straight into the distillery, straight into production, and it also satisfies all of our cooling needs uh, as well. Um, and it's been here for actually a very long time, 1790 it was founded, and that goes kind of before the received wisdom that um, there were licenses for distilleries to make whiskey. So what was the very early Balblair story like? Kind of vague, <laughs> uh, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, although we were just established in 1790, mm. The distillery was actually moved to this site in 1895 and that was really to utilise the railway track. And the railway arrived so it made sense to, to move it a quarter of a mile yeah. uh, down here. And obviously over the years, you know, technology's advanced. Um, yeah. But the basic principles of making whisky mm. you know, have, haven't really changed as you and I both know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been tweaked and science has helped a lot. But, uh, you know, we've been making whisky and this circle since 1790. Hopefully we're, we're doing it right. I think the fact that you're still here after that amount of time means that something has been going very right. <laughs> I wonder, because we recently visited uh, Glen Turret, who like to stroke their beard and say, you know, they also have this incredibly long history going back. Is there a bit of a friendly rivalry between the, the Methuselah distilleries of Scotland? I like to think there's friendly rivalry within <laughs> everybody mm. uh, in the industry. So that, that's what makes it so great, I think. You tend to find that people that work at distilleries, they do have a real pride in what they do. Fiercely proud. How does Balblair make a whisky? Uh, what particular techniques and bits of equipment make Balblair unique? All the pieces of equipment here, not necessarily unique, but it's how we use them. The mill is a very old Porteous mill, uh, which is not uncommon. Mm. Um, but we keep a close eye on that, so we get that correct grist. Um, probably the most reliable piece of kit uh, that we have on site. The mash tun is stainless steel, a semi-louter, 4.4 tonne mash. Mm -hmm. uh, but that mash is slow, you know, it's six and a half hours, you know, to turn that around. Which gives us a very, very clear, bright wort. Mm. Because it's a very tall, deep bed mm. uh, mash, so the filtration is, you know, it's quite extensive. Just the, just the sort of the interlocking barley creates its own kind of filter. That's right. Yeah. So the fermentation, I mean, to open those washbacks, I mean, I've been to lots and lots of other distilleries, mm. uh, but I've never smelt a fermentation quite like what we achieve here. You know, when I open up that washback, Liz, you know, it never ceases to grab me. Mm. You know, it's just like an orchard hitting your nose. 
And the mashing regime is, you know, is part of that, it's mm -hmm. testament to that. The washbacks themselves, they're traditional, they're wooden washbacks, Oregon pine. Mm -hmm. Then we move into the still room, quite a long fermentation into these just two you know, classic shape of stills, mm -hmm. run very, very slowly and then put into nothing but high quality wood in mm -hmm. traditional Dunwich style warehouses. This distillery is all about quality. If I take somebody around a tour here, I'll probably say that word, you know, five, six, seven times quality over quantity. There's, there's lots of things we could do here, you know, to speed up process and to get and get more throughput. Mm. But if we did that, I know that quality would slip. Mm. And that's something the company is not willing to compromise on. It seems that one of the uh, the, the factors in making Belle Blair is nothing will ever be rushed. And it feels like every stage there is attention on the quality. So is there is there one stage that's more important than the others? As far as I'm concerned, you know, every stage of process is as important uh, as the next. When we start just from taking the water, you know, off the hill, it's very, very pure, it's very, very soft, um, with lots of it. There is no uh, farmlands running through that, so there's no risk of contamination. Then we end up with a you know, very, very complex mm -hmm. uh, new mix spirit. And it's, it's a very robust new mix spirit as well. And I think that allows it, all these beautiful flavors created during mashing distillation, it allows it to survive even at you know, high age maturation mm -hmm. in the warehouses. And at almost every stage, you know, you lift the lid on something or you walk in through a door and there is this kind of abiding, kind of apple cidery, orchardy yeah. aroma. So it's almost like Balblair finds its identity early in the process. And it, it does, also. it's quite unusual mm. uh, to find that. Balblair New Spirit has is the result of very careful maintenance of, of clarity in the, in the process. And then you turn it over to a cask. So what is the cask maturation style here at the distillery? It's a very strict wood policy we operate, not just the Bal Blair, but the other Inverhouse sites as well. That that policy is set year in, year out, and we will fill a definitive number of either first fill ex-bourbons, second fill ex-bourbons, mm -hmm. first fill sherries, mm -hmm. and second fill sherries. It's quite regimented mm -hmm. uh, that way. And I suppose that comes from the understanding of the spirit and what it works best yes. with. Yes. At the moment I'd probably say 92-3% would be in ex-bourbon, mm. American oak, and the, rain, the remainder being in sherries. Mm. Most of it being barrels as well. Mostly barrels? Mostly barrels. Not, okay, not, not so, so not, not rebuilt to hogsheads, but still in barrel form? I wouldn't say so, not now. I remember my first experience of Bal Blair, um, had a, had a lineup of a few tastings and they were all very golden in colour and they all had kind of a tropical almost sort of pineapple note and I think the the ex-bourbon cask is fantastic at drawing that out. Yeah. It is, it's certainly what I favour mm. uh, myself. People may recognise uh, Bal Blair's uh, official bottles quite easily because they have a very distinctive shape. Not always been so, so when did the change take place and does the shape represent anything in particular? The bottles changed shape uh, quite dramatically in 2007. We went to vintage rather than you know age statement before mm -hmm. that. Then the decision was taken a couple of years back to revert back to age statement. Mm -hmm. the, the shape of the bottle uh, is supposed to represent like a pebble shape. If you look in the burn mm -hmm. you'll see like all the stones in the bottom have quite distinctive uh, shape, they all resemble that. So that was part of the reason. And mm -hmm. the label itself represents the shape of the Struy Hill, mm -hmm. you know, which is quite iconic, and its reflection in the Dorn of Firth. Oh, so that's so how you get the up whole with that. Of... Yeah, that's where that comes from. Bal Blair is uh, a whiskey that's beloved by independent bottlers. You know, it has that very strong character uh, the, the sort of the orchard fruitiness, the sweetness that is identifiable and it also takes to a great variety of different cask types. Yeah. So 
How does it feel where maybe you see that um, an independent bottler has been working with your whiskey and uh, releasing it slightly differently? I like to see bar player out there in all forms, as long as they're done well. Mm. And I've, you know, I've never tasted, you know, a poor bar player mm. yet. You know, and I hope I never do. So that tells me that you know we're giving the independent bottlers, you know, something very, very good. Well, we touched on um, the sort of the, the beauty of the location, and as you say, how uh, Ken Loach described this as kind of the most distinctive of Scottish distilleries when he made his film um, The Angel's Share. I think that has made uh, Belle Blair possibly the most visible of Scottish distilleries. It's almost a Hollywood star in its own right now. Does that come with advantages or disadvantages? I say nothing but advantage mm. uh, to having that. I mean, when they came here, we had such a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was fascinating for them to see a distillery in operation and for us to see a film crew, uh, especially somebody as revered as Ken Loaches. A lot of the staff were actually in the film. Yeah, I was honoured, really. But the, the distillery itself was the star mm. uh, of the show. The distillery is very open to visitors. Uh, you have a visitor centre and tour and tasting and all that stuff here. So if people did want to come and visit Belle Blair and um, uh, either for the whiskey or for the movies or that perfect fusion of both, um, how, what's the best way of doing so? If you go online, you know, we've got a very good online booking system, mm -hmm. uh, telephone. Uh, but we, we try not to say to anybody you can't visit. You know, we welcome you know, anybody and everybody. I want to say, John McDonald, thank you so much for talking with us today. It's been so nice to be in what I think is inarguably the most beautiful distillery in Scotland. Let's say, let's, let's, let's say that. I won't argue with that. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.